92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com. Streaming audio live, RTC Channel 5. Audio, video will soon be up on RTC Channel 4. And Dakota makes his presence known again. Hey, how are you? Doing pretty good. Good. Welcome back. Well, actually, you just, you were here, right? Well, yeah. Okay. Right. All right. We'll get you your own dressing room one of these days. That's all you need. John Alley sitting across from me, President and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital. Before we start the report, congratulations to you and all of the Blacktop Cruisers on a job well done at Chili Cookoff. It was uh, a chilly day, but uh, we still had a, a very good turnout of cars for that. And, uh, you know, it, it's not any one or two people that does that. Uh, we had a tremendous amount of help from club members. And even we have some folks who aren't even club members, they would come in and help us. So uh, we, we heard a lot of positive comments this year that, uh, again, it is probably one of the best car shows in the state of Indiana, and that's what we strive to keep doing. So it uh, turned out very good. Well, you know, it takes, looking at it on the surface, people don't understand the detail that is behind it and how many folks it really takes to pull off something like that. And it's nice, of course, you've had some years of experience now. I'm sure maybe it gets a little easier each year, but at the same time, there's still a certain amount of work that has to be done. Right. We'll probably take uh, a couple months off in February. We'll start planning for next year. (laughs) And, uh, you know, what can we do better? What can we enhance? How can we make it better for the participants? And, uh, again, our goal is to, again, premier car show in the state of Indiana. And I think the best thing that I see, and I I attend a lot of car shows, I pass out flyers, you know, throughout Indiana and Michigan, is the quality of cars that show up for this car show. Um, Everybody has told me that if you get a trophy at the Rochester Car Show, you've got a nice car. And uh, we pride ourselves on it. It does draw a tremendous amount of nice vehicles. A variety. And a variety. A little bit of everything shows up. Absolutely. I learned to drive on a Studebaker, and I'd run across the street was a Studebaker, so I was a happy kid. You were happy. You get to look <laughs> at a Studebaker. Was. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, one of my jobs is, is one of the first people they see when they come in is, you know, help uh, direct traffic. So I get to see every car, uh, which is probably the best job here. Every car has to drive by sure. me. And, uh, you know, it's just fantastic. You sit there and go, oh, I like that. And, oh, I like, well, you know, by the time the day's over, I've had about 300 cars I'd like to buy. Uh but, of course, my wife keeps me uh, grounded on it and says no. But Do they have a hospital president's award? Uh, not yet. Not we'll, yet. Have to, we'll have to think about that. <laughs> okay. uh, maybe put that in at some point in the future. Add that in for next yes. year, right? About 450 vehicles, I think you yes. said. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Excellent. And, uh, yeah, we, are, we have a swap meet also, and right. that grows. We had a little over, thir- I think, 13 vendors this year. So each year we gain two or three on that, and that takes some time to get that sure. in. And, sure. uh, you know, the weather dependent. Uh, the car show is really, really dependent on the weather that time of year. We had several folks come in later in the day and pass the registration, but they said it was just too darn cold when I got up this morning. <laughs> and uh, I was very impressed. There was two or three vehicles that came in around 6 o'clock in the morning, open cockpit. Wow. Uh, That's I, impressive. I, I walked up and I shook their hands. Uh, I said, you're a man. <laughs> you know, and impressive. They, they were shivering in blue, but they said they wouldn't miss the car show. So All right. that's a dedication. Well, anyway, congratulations. You guys Thank did a great you. job. Thank you. All right. To the hospital report. The trustees met yesterday. Yes, had our board meeting yesterday. So we did a lot of catching up on some uh, stuff that has happened during the year and, and look into next year. And uh, recently we, we very proud to say that our OB department has received two awards. One is a national award. We were in the top 5% of hospitals in the country on our uh, first dose Hep B vaccines for the newborns. And uh, that's a pretty big deal. Uh, you know, the staff has worked extremely hard to make sure that gets done. And then we also got a state award for our excellence in the Hep B and HIV screening of newborns. And again, top 95% there in the state. So that staff has done an excellent job. Uh, we didn't know we were getting it. State Board of Health shows up. So usually when they show up, everybody <laughs> scatters. And they said, no, it's a good thing this time. And right. uh, they had those two awards for our OB department. So very nice. again, uh, very proud of the staff, what they've done there. A few years ago, I we weren't in the top. Right. You know, uh, it was one of those, we were probably the lot, bottom part of the state two or three years ago. And they took upon themselves as we've got to improve this. And it was the staff. They absolutely worked their tails off to get us these awards. And uh, just congratulations, job well done. You bet. Absolutely. The other thing that we've been getting some uh, questions on from the patients, I just wanted to clarify a little bit, is the the dreaded satisfaction surveys. Ah. Every time you come in, we're handing one of those to you. And I don't think we do a good job explaining why we do that. 
part of our, uh, as we move forward with CMS, which is the Medicare, Medicaid program, and other payers, they take those satisfaction surveys. We have to turn them in, and they grade us on those. And so as we're moving forward, our reimbursement that goes to the physician offices are based on those surveys. So, you know, we'd like for you to, you know, give us a fair survey. If we did good, tell us. Give us a good survey. If we don't do good, tell us so we can improve that for the next time. So that's why, you know, every time you come to the office, we're, we're handing you a survey. You know, you uh, might even get a phone call at home which is CMS, basically, which is the Medicare folks. If you've been an inpatient, they're going to call and say, how was your stay? And unfortunately, it's a long survey. I think it's like a 25-minute phone call. Uh, And it's the same questions are asked of everybody. So it's not, you know, doesn't make any difference who you are. It is prescribed by CMS. These are the questions that have to be asked. And again, that goes into our score. So, you know, we'd like for, uh, you know, oh, we'd love to get all five. Oh, absolutely, sure. We know that's... We don't always meet everybody's expectations, but that's how we used to, when we get that feedback, say, okay, where did we fall down on this? What did we not do that made that person feel like this was an excellent visit? So and therefore, how can we make it better? How can we make it better? So yes, one of those, if you don't tell us, we can't improve it. So we, we look at these diligently. They are extremely important that we get those, that feedback back to us. We can give it to the, the offices or to our staff in the hospital and say, you know, 99 times you did good, but here this one time you didn't. How can we fix that so it doesn't happen again? So I encourage you, even though it's frustrating and, you know, I get those same surveys when I go in, it's like, why do I have to do this again? <laughs> um, but it's, it's just part of that requirement, and it does have meaning. It's just not a survey for nothing. It does mean something to us and to the, you know, the regulatory agencies. They do look at those surveys also. So please continue to fill them out. And, you know, if we do an outstanding job, tell us we did an outstanding job. You know, if we didn't, let us know so we can fix that. we Will do. One of the other things that we've started to hear uh, that we found, again, help that patient experience with uh, orthopedic patients, we've kind of started what's called a joint school. So if you're currently going to have a uh, joint replacement surgery or if you're thinking about it, uh, we've got a class that you can sit in that takes you from step one through 27 walks you through that whole process prior to you getting to the hospital. And what we found is that takes some anxiety away. If you know what's happening before you get there, it's not quite as bad. And uh, we've had two or three uh, patients have gone through it, and afterwards it's the best thing I've ever done. It really helped that process because we, we, the physician comes in, therapy's there. So we, we start from pre-surgery uh, testing, what's happened in-house, what therapy is going to do, what are the expectations. So there's no surprises when you come in. Hopefully, you know, you're a little more relaxed. You're, okay, here's step one, step two, and we walk you through that process. I think you've got a couple more coming up. We have you? a couple more coming yeah. up. Uh, there's one uh, this Friday at noon at the hospital. November 13th, we've got one scheduled for the 5 p.m., and then December 17th at 5 p.m. So if you're interested in attending one of these classes, please give Rochester Orthopedics a call at 574 574- Two two three nine five two five to reserve your spot. That way, I guess they got really good cookies, is what I understand. <laughs> so, uh, you know, make sure we have a good count on that. But again, even if you're not currently scheduled for surgery, but you're thinking about, am I going to maybe need a knee replacement, hip replacement? This is an excellent opportunity to get your questions answered so you know what that process is. What kind of recovery time? A lot of people don't understand right. different types of procedures have different recovery times. And, uh, you know, we've got the new anterior hip procedure where basically two days later you're up and going. Well, the traditional hip replacement, it might be two to three weeks. So you need to know what are those expectations? How is that going to affect you? So you're well prepared, your questions answered, and you're relaxed when you come yeah, in. It takes some of the anxiety out of it. It takes that anxiety out of there. It's surgery. I don't care how major, how right. minor. It's, it's still surgery right and uh, you know it's a scary thing so what we're hoping to do is this this type of joint school get you well prepared so you you don't have a false expectation you know some people think well i'm having my knee done i can go out and run a marathon tomorrow (laughs) no you can't you know so that's what we help the next day but maybe the next day so what this does is give you that timeline here's your recovery timeline here's what it's going to take for you to get from point a to i'm back to normal you know what is that time what kind of therapies involved so uh, it's very very good program the surgeons come in and are there for a little bit of it. So, again, you can ask the surgeon, you know, how's this going to go? Sure. And it's just we've gotten tremendous feedback from those who've gone through it so far. So we're encouraging those folks, please, if you're thinking of it, give them a call, get in that class. Or if you've got a surgery scheduled, get into the class so we can help you 
under better understand what's coming up for you and uh, you know the more knowledge you have the better it is good idea uh, yesterday's board meeting i was actually in charge of the whole board meeting for about 30 seconds where you go okay. uh, once a year you that's know, record we, time isn't yeah, it? for me it was <laughs> yeah we have the election of officers so uh, okay. you know when the meeting first starts we have no officers i'm in charge which is a scary thing <laughs> uh so we quickly got into the nominations and the election of the officers for the hospital board and once again jim mulligan is the chair of the hospital dick belcher is vice chair and nancy day is secretary okay so, uh, again, it took about 30 seconds for we get Jim in there, and I handed it off and said, now it's yours. <laughs> and he, he ran the meeting at that point. And then the biggest thing we probably did yesterday at the board meeting, uh, our mammography unit is on its last legs. And so we've decided what do we need to do and been looking. And the board did approve for us to advance our technology up to a, what's called a 3D um, digital mammography, okay. which is the newest state-of-the-art. And uh, so... To actually, today we're going through and looking. Uh, we have presentations from vendors coming in, trying to say why their product is better than another one. And I think of what it does, and I, I'm not an expert on this, but it really gives that radiologist a superb photo picture of what's going on. So it's much quicker diagnostic. It's much more uh, uh, defined. So early detection, that's what we're looking for. So hopefully with by the first year, I'm, I don't know if we can do it that quick, but I'd like to have the new unit in and operational by the first year. So we're actually moving up. It will be the, the greatest and the best in mammography because, you know, that's an extremely important uh, test for young ladies and, and, you know, the older ladies. Sure. Get your annual mammogram. And you was mentioned, uh, you know, not too long ago we had the program on uh, Dick Belcher's program. You know, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So, you know, get your mammograms. Early detection can save lives. And uh, I just can't stress enough how important it is if you're in that age group that should have this done, get it done. Get with your physician. Get this test done. It, it could save your life. Kudos again to Woodlawn Hospital. It seems like the hospital always on the cutting edge. I remember when picked up the 64 slice CT scan not too long ago. Well, I've been two or three years ago now, I it's suppose. Been, it's been about 10 years ago it's on that been, one. Uh, yes, time flies. Time flies. Fun, right? But anyway... You know, and then to do this in mammography, I think, yeah. I think that speaks highly for the hospital. We've actually upgraded CT up to 132 right. slices wow. now. Again, we're, what is needed to ser best serve our patients and give our physicians that tool that's right. going to help them make that correct diagnosis? Um, you know, we're not going to buy something we're not going to use. Uh, to me, I, that's not a good steward of our resources. So we analyze, you know, all this equipment and will this make a difference in our patients and help our physicians? If the answer is yes then that's what we go for and, and try to get that type of technology in the hospital. Excellent. Finally, we got down to the financials okay. for the month of September. Uh, we had gross revenue about $11.8 million, uh, wrote off our $7.2 million, which, you know, it's uh, kind of that 60%. We're running there all, uh, pretty well all the time. So we had total operating revenue of $4.5 million. Expenses were up a little bit. They were up to $4.8 million, so we actually had an operating loss for the month. But we had some non-operating income, and that's due to our affiliation with some of the nursing homes we have in the area uh, where we kind of share with them some uh, federal dollars to help them improve their facility. So once we factored that in, we actually came up with a net income for the month of about $715,000. So uh, it's been making a pretty good difference for us having that affiliation with the nursing homes. Our goal is for 2019 is to have an operational profit, uh, not rely on the nursing home funds to help boost our bottom line. We need to get to that point, and uh, our budget should be finalized within this week or so, presented at next board meeting. Right now, it looks like we're anticipating, if everything goes like we hope, an operational profit next year of about $600,000. Now, when you talk, uh, you know, how many hundreds of millions of dollars, and we're hoping well, for exactly. 600000 Exactly. But, uh, you know, that's, uh, I think that's reasonable. That gets us uh, to where... On the plus side, we're on the black side of the ledger as far as operations, and that's where we need to be as we move forward because this special program where we have with the nursing homes, you know, that's a federally mandated program. It could go away, so we can't rely on that. We've got to be self-sufficient. So that's our goal, to get to that point where we're self-sufficient, not have to use uh, these operating funds from the nursing homes for our daily operations. 2018, John, how's that going so far? I mean, uh, pretty good Pretty good 2018 revenue-wise? Not really. Revenue's okay. down a little bit. Um, you know, I, I, I kind of look at the things we control. When I look at our expenses year to date, we're within 2%, 2.5% of budget, which is a 
pretty close when you when you consider the it size is, of our sure. operation. But it's the revenue that's down this year, and uh, that's what we can't control. Right. So, you know, that's best guess. When we do our budget, we, we try to look at trends and, and what do we think is going to happen next year. So the revenue is is that, uh, you know, the uh, famous accounting, the swag, uh, <laughs> simple, <laughs> wild guess. Um, and that's kind of what it is. Yeah. And uh, you, you use trends, you use what you think is going to happen. So, you know, we've got to better control our revenue and our deductions. That 60% that we're writing off, we'd like to reduce that down to 58%. That would help. Sure. Big difference. Right. When you talk a 2% reduction in some of the bad debts and some of that write-off, again, that's our operational bottom line. So that's where we're looking at next year. We can't control the revenue so much, but we can control our write-offs. And, you know, we've had quite a few write-offs this year that, you know, honestly, we shouldn't have had. You know, we just let things slip through cracks. We should have never done that. So we've got items put in place, kind of a, you know, catch fence, so to speak, so those things can't fall through those cracks. So I'm I'm optimistic that we will be able to hit an operational uh, profit for next year just by controlling some of those those write-offs. Hit that. I think we do an excellent job, the staff, the directors, of controlling their cost. And even though we're a cost-based hospital, what that means from a Medicare perspective is they pay us cost. Uh, to provide service to the Medicare population. I've always been uh, of the mindset I'd rather be conservative and reduce my costs because, again, that's one of those programs that someday could go away. So if I'm not controlling my costs today, I can't control it fast enough to pick up for that change when we go away from a cost-based reimbursement to just a flat payment system. So we, we kind of operate like we're in a, a uh, flat-based fee, not a cost-based and I like it that way. I'm, I'm well prepared if we lose our critical access status. We're working toward that and okay. keeping our costs down. Our next big goal now is control those contractuals, control the write-offs. And I think that's our, our area. If I can pick up 1% to 2% improvement there, I've got my bottom line real easy just in that area. John, you mentioned the budget, and the budget will be approved by the board next month. What happens to it then? Yeah, we'll present it to the board next month. They can either approve it then okay. or give us a month, and they'll approve it in December. Once that is finally approved, then we go into you know the, the computer system and wipe out the old budget and put the new budget in. And what that does each month, then we can provide to our departments, here's what you th- told me you are going to do. What do you actually do? And what we ask them to do is just kind of identify any major variances. So if, if they've, and I'll pick a number, said I'm going to spend $100 in you know, widgets, right. and they spend 500 why? You know, what happened this month that caused you to go over that budget? And usually there's an explanation of why that happened. You know, maybe their procedures went up, which is a good thing. So if their revenue goes up, expenses, I'm okay with that going up. So, you know, the downside, if revenue goes down, we can control the expenses to a certain point, but because we have minimum staffing standards, if I have no patients and no B, I still have to have two nurses in there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Same thing in ER. I have to have staff there whether we have patients or not. So I'm, I can't flex so much in my labor. And that's right now 58% of our total expenses is labor-related, either through th- salaries and wages and then the benefits and health insurance and all that. So that's a big portion of my total budget Huge. is just in you know human resources. Right. So we got to control those others than uh, expenses. So if I do have a, a reduction in volumes, my supply cost should be going down. I shouldn't see. And that's what we ask those staff members then to do on a monthly basis. Why are you over? You know, your volume was down. Why are you over in supplies? And lots of times there's a pretty good reason for that. So it just keeps them aware, keeps them looking at that, keeps it to the front of their mind. So we're constantly watching our costs and trying to maintain the best service we can and be very cost efficient in doing it. John Alley, President and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital. Then next month's meeting, will the budget be the primary We'll probably be the primary issue. thing. We'll do that presentation to okay. the board next month. And uh, we try to get it to them two, at least two weeks prior to the board meeting. So they've had at least somewhat of a chance to go through it get us their questions and uh, if they can get to us the questions early that really helps us then when the board meeting is in session we're able to answer those questions so uh yes hopefully that goes out Uh, i know we're fine-tuning it a little bit this afternoon i'm meeting with the cfo i had a couple questions on some areas that i wasn't real clear on and uh, which is a the poor CFO, you know, I used to be a CFO, so, you know, I remember that. I'm asking those questions. He goes, darn, I didn't know you'd catch that. Uh, so I'm asking some of those questions, but I'd like to get it finalized this week or next week. 
kind of then do one final look at it again and then get it out to the to the board for them to review so we're ready for presentation in the November meeting. Again, John Alley, President and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital. We always appreciate your time. Thanks very much. Oh, my pleasure to be here. And uh, keep everybody healthy, will you please? All right. Well, that's I'm yes. We're <laughs> one business that we're trying to put ourselves out of business by keeping everybody healthy. Exactly. And, uh, you know, that's uh, we're hoping with uh, you know, some of the new technology that we can catch stuff ahead of time. And you know, I think with this the new mammogram coming in, that three D technology is gonna greatly enhance physicians' ability for early detection of, of the you know breast cancer because early detection is the key. The sooner you can find it, the better. John Alley, thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it.